What a mess. Get the last there, mate. Don't worry about it, mate. When the floor rusts out, we'll put a new floor in. In this episode, we're back working on modifying it never ends my 1995 TD42 Nissan GQ Patrol. I thought the build was done, but it's not. So, we're adding some mods that have been lacking from the GQ that I wished I had have done earlier and fixing up some of the issues I've been having with it. Don't let kids stand on it. <laughs> Don't drop nothing on it. If you break it, I'll kill you. <laughs> And then we head down the beach for a drive to test them all out and Birdo brings his little Zook too. They're all working, the party is on. Proudly supported by Ultimate Nine. Fred, Opus Campers, Superior Engineering, and in part by. Before we jump into the episode, I just want to do a quick little life update and channel update on myself, because otherwise you guys <laughs> wonder what's going on. So the shed where we're actually working in this episode and where we're going to be continuing to work in all our episodes, so we've got some really cool 80 content coming up there, is a shed that I've hired. So I've actually got my own space where we can properly work on the vehicles. It's next door to my mate Josh, Wireside Electrical. So I've just rented out sort of uh, a third, a quarter of his shed. Uh, so he's given us some space there, which is quite exciting for me. And the other big change happening with the channel at the moment is Birdo or Nick Burden. Uh, everyone always calls him Birdo. His name is actually Nick Burden. You would have seen him in a lot of my content over the last 18 months. He's actually stepping on to help me out more on the channel and take on more of a permanent role. And hopefully we'll be able to put out more and better quality content together. So some very exciting stuff, a couple big changes going on there. I was thinking to myself the other day, I started this channel August 2017, just on the side, some odd, odd videos here and there. I really just wanted to document our travels and adventures that we were having at the time. And I'd always enjoyed watching other people on YouTube, so I just wanted to have a crack at doing it myself. We've now got multiple people, like Demi as well, Birdo, myself, working together to produce the content and make these videos happen on the channel. All the awesome trips, builds, all the things we do. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, like it's all just, it's crazy how it's all worked out. And I just wanted to say thank you and show my appreciation to all you guys that watch the videos support the channel it's it's been an incredible journey and experience whatever happens at this point this isn't all of the gear we're installing but i've got most of it here so i've got to go grab a couple more things from the shops but yeah we've got a fair bit laid out but a quick rig rundown on what we got here today we got uhf and aerial locker wire we got some ultimate nine lights and party lights some sound deadener and we also have a brand new genuine santa console gear sticks around yeah and if you have a look at the car over here but it has already started stripping some of her out and there's a fair mess in here. Why do they talk like gangsters? Why they don't move like gangsters? Why do they walk like gangsters? Before we started tackling the mess inside the GQ, we'd figured we'd install the new GME antenna on the bull bar, and then we could neatly run the wiring through the engine bay into the cab and sort it out with the rest of the wires in there. With wiring outside the cab, it's always best to wrap it in conduit for some extra protection. Where do we want the push to talk button? So it's a Bluetooth module, but in case you don't want to grab it and talk, you normally have it somewhere close so you can just press a button. Yeah. Like you just press it and then there's a little microphone and you just talk. So we're currently trying to work out, so everyone tell us where to put the handheld. But you know what? By the time they tell us, it's going to be too late, mate. We'll be, we'll it'll be, it'll be over, mate. We're going to have to put it in. If it's down there and hits your knee, we could do a TJ and just drill it into the dash over here. Did you see when he did that on his nerve? No. He caused the big blow up, mate. He drilled it. He drilled straight it. over there. Straight into the dash. Do you like how I've mounted this? What do you think, mate? That'll do the trick. You did not put that. Where would you put it? Not on your dash. I like it. Where would you put it? Somewhere you can't see it. 
You need to be able to see its own butt. I thought we were putting it here. Oh, we can. No, no, no you've, no, you've screwed in your dash. I'm two holes there. Oh, I mean, hey, build it your way, mate. Shut up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I screwed into this because I've got like four of these. So if I ever want to fix it, I just replace this. Yeah, true. You can't replace that. Yeah, true. Mate. You can replace this. You can replace that. Yeah, true. So maybe that's the, one of those is a smarter option then. Than Th the that was there. my my theory in it. So mine, yeah, runs just there. Like right, right there. Yeah, so you're driving, you grab it, boom. Which, by blocking the vent, it only blocks this much. Yeah. But if you want to point it at you, you're, you're probably not getting much. But you got the aircon on, mate, boom. This one, straight at you. And if you don't have someone over there, boom, straight at you. So we, we should do a quick run through of which actual box I'm putting in. We've got the X, uh, XRS Connect. Uh, 390. 390 is the This mic. is the big one, the yeah, good one. This is the big top of it's the line. It's got GPS inbuilt. So what are the cool features of it? Look, there's about unlimited things you can do with it. That's seen better days, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we got a new one of them out there. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Some bike in his... Bird Isle Park, was it? <laughs> yeah. Straight out of his actual car. <laughs> yeah. Can we can we see the part? Oh, this this mouldy dirty thing. Yeah. It yeah. might it might be dirty, there might be a rat on it, but doesn't have holes in it. We'll clean it up and then it'll be good to go. Yeah. One owner grandpa spec car that came out of. <laughs> One owner. So I just passed the antenna over from the other side and the power over from the other side. Now I'm just plugging them in, twisting them in. And then other than that, once I've got this mounted and away, click clack. And that's that. GME in here, all hooked up, ready to go. We got the spot, so look, blocked off the air vent, air vent a fraction, but it was not much. not much, and it was it was going to be the best spot in the end. I'm just pulling this seat out, so I'm going to get all the vinyl up. We're going to do some sound editing, you know, make it all nice and quiet in here. Nice. Fat shackers, mate. Fat that's a, that's a nice, um, that's a nice bracket you got there. Where's that from? There's that Cap Industries. Yeah, mate. Cap Industries, they sell them. I'll oh. hit them up. They'll have to send me some stuff. Puff pack windy. If I can say it's mate. Not on. Look, I've still got mud all under my floor everywhere from Tasmania. Yeah, you, you never get it out like this. <laughs> it's in there. It's, it's permanent. Part of the car now. Grass in here. Is that all just gonna rust away with mud and water sitting in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a bad idea pulling this car apart. Might have been better off just never knowing what's going on underneath there because now we know and now it's bad. What a mess. It rusts there, mate. Don't worry about it, mate. When the floor rusts out, we'll put a new floor in. Yeah. <laughs> just GQ things. How does that make you feel taller? <laughs> yes, just, yeah, it's a good, just don't. You don't even know it's there. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the cab's water water cooled. It obviously just dust comes in off your boots, goes down your vinyl, and then if there's a water leak, comes in, turns to mud, rust everything out. Just yeah. dirt's fine. Every every six months you pull your vinyl up and you vacuum your mounts or something. We'll go through, get as much of the water and mud out as we can, and then start rebuilding. Yeah, th this is recommended annually. <laughs> yeah. Bop, bop. Bob Bob sounds on. Sounds on. I, I do the boom boom, you do the Bob Bob. Yeah. So I'll rip the vinyl up, clean the mud out, and I'm looking at this thing, boom. What's, what's the go with that? It's missing one, two, three screws. Who last, who who last was that? playing around with that? Is that that Timmy bloke, that YouTube, <laughs> that Apple technician? Yeah. 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 No, you leave the <laughs> he sticks around to me, we we'll <laughs> Get him on the haggle for sure. <laughs> He's gonna blow up. <laughs> no, I put them back in, I swear, man, they must have rolled out. <laughs> yeah, well, they're not on the and floor are they, Timmy? Hopefully I bring enough screws. I did bring some of these screws with me. I have to go back to your patrol park yeah. garage. How long does it take me to go out there and come back? Not long, eh? Yeah. So, but, but at Sean's house, like four houses down the road, there's a big shed, and Berta has multiple cars there. So if we need parts, Boom. straight to Berta apart. Yeah, and it's we, got, and we got freight. Now, I should also say, the whole reason this endeavour started is because I was getting so much heat and noise come up through all of this. 
And obviously the base of the problem was the fact that this wasn't bolted in properly, it's ripped, which is allows noise and heat. And also there's not really enough sound deadening around at all. So that's what we rebuild it from the ground up with new everything. And that'll hopefully stop the noise and heat that's coming up through it. And also my, I got a new console, uh, not console, gear sticks around. Yeah. That, that was what was left of mine. So mine, it was cracked when I bought it and then I dropped something on it and it cracked more and then Zeph stood on it and it shattered to pieces and... So when he first got it, I said, hey Tyler, I will buy that off you. I didn't have one yet. He said, nah, 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 and then he goes and ruins it. <laughs> now look at me. He could have had, had 300 bucks for it. Look at me now. Oh, that thing's pretty sus too. And you can also see, like, obviously, literally right there. Yeah, it's coming straight through that. Yeah, and like your gearbox and everything's right there. So that's why you get so much noise and heat when you drive. Look you... down on this angle, mate. What's down there? Is that, a, is that an exhaust pipe? <laughs> yeah. And what, what do your AGTs get to? 400 and something. Yeah. So that's probably 400 and something degrees. Air's hitting it. Like, you know, taking some heat off it straight up in there. But that would make sense. So the whole, the whole front of this is off. It's coming up, hitting it and then it's sort of doing a U-turn going up under that. No wonder all that's like red Yeah, because that gets really hot when you're driving, like in under all that. Yeah. So you pretty much just got 400 degree heat off the exhaust. That's my old one. Yeah. And that's the Birdo Apart new special. Just needed a bit of a clean up. This, this is twice as thick. So I think this is obviously one for the model with the center, the center console. And this is the model for one without the center console. I run this and a center console and mine's fine. Tyler cheaped out, didn't get the applicator, so I'm gonna fit with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Budget sound deadening by. Look at this, ready? Nice. You edit it to where it's stuck on, alright? Yeah. <laughs> She's done. With the new gear stick rubbers that were free from holes and bolted in properly this time, Berto got to work with some sound deadening around the trans tunnel, gear sticks, and firewall. This should reduce heat and noise from that area. What do you reckon about that piece, mate? One piece. Wasn't laying flat, so you know what I did? Put a cut down in his there, and then he's, he's overlaid. It's, it's flat it. now. We don't have the applicator. I didn't even use the applicator to do it but... I remember when they're in the shopping cart, there was like an extra 30, 40 bucks for the application kit, and you are like, nah, nah don't nah. worry about it. That's, that's what I'm saying. We just, <laughs> get, we'll just get it done. Mind you, I did cut myself, you know. Didn't make a sound when it cut me, but did it? That's how you know it's good stuff. <laughs> When you're driving this car now, it literally sounds like you you got like the gearbox and road right under you. I reckon even that thing burned <laughs> down will make a big difference. It's gonna be a hell of a lot better. Because I've always said to people that driving a GQ is like driving a tractor. And then when you've driven mine from yours, you're like, nah, that's just yours. With the first layer of sound deadening down, it was time for the second. A closed cell foam layer. There are multiple layers and types you can use in your four-wheel drive in combination with each other to increase heat and noise reduction. We just went with the two in my GQ. It's not perfect, but it'll still do its job. It's like this whole car, mate. It's not perfect, but it does the job. Amen to that. That's, um, that's going to stop some, stop some heat and some sand. Yeah. That's all that front sound deadened up there, so I got the couple layers and I reckon that's going to make a huge difference in there, plus all this new gear sticks around properly bolted in. Yeah, what have we got? We've got butyl foil, two layers of closed cell foam. Oh. I think our next thing is to run some locker wire. <laughs> On many of my recent videos, including towards the end of the Central Australia trip, you ought to see my lockers don't work. <laughs> We did some testing at home to work out whether it's the diff or the wiring because we mucked around this wiring a few times before and it still didn't work. But we pretty much put direct power from the batteries to the diff and then they worked perfectly every time. There's back lock. Yeah. There's forward lock. Yeah, that's a lot better. Back lock. Forward lock. But without the direct power using the wiring, even like they weren't working well at all. So that's off. Yeah. Very bad. 
So we're getting, we've tested, we're getting full power, like at the diffs from the lockers. But then when you jack it up and put it under tests like that, like it's just, it's locking in reverse and then locking sometimes forwards. So we ripped the whole wiring out and we found more issues with it. Like it wasn't earthed properly, it wasn't receiving the right volts. I don't know, there was things going on. So we got a new wiring loom off Harrop. Plus I got it beefed up as well by Josh here at Wireside Electrical. So what we're going to do, so this mini relay just here, we're actually going to swap that out to, oh sorry, this is a micro relay. We're going to swap it out to a mini relay. These have like a peak sort of run um, amperage at 30 amps, which we all sort of know that that's not going to happen. Um, these ones are 40, but continuous, they're effectively 20. The next thing that I'm going to do, this cable here, it's probably three mil. I'm going to up, uh, up spec that to four mil, which is this stuff just here that's on the roll. Um, then we'll try and color match it. Um, we'll keep this switch. Um, these, this connector here, we'll get rid of this connector and we'll go to like a weatherproof, what I call like a, a DT connector or a Deutsch connection. Um, just because, yeah, they are sealed. Where These are semi sort of sealed, I would say, but um, they're just not my preferred connection point. That's all these are. So that's about it, I think. And it, Oh, and one, one other thing. We'll, we'll go to an insulated um, inline fuse holder as well. So that's the difference there. So that's what Josh did the other day. <laughs> We're back present day. We called him over. He's in the middle of afternoon tea. Uh, I suppose we kind of said what you're gonna do, but here, here, yeah. here it is f finished and done with all the new, with all the new nice pieces on it. So yeah, what we've done: two 40 amp mini relays. Pretty much just wired it to the same spec as what it was originally, but just we went up one size in cable. Uh, hopefully it fits because I did change it a little bit. Didn't didn't tell you. <laughs> But no, same, same switches, just upgraded cable, upgraded relays, major upgraded fusing. Um, I think we'll be sweet. You shouldn't have any dramas. Yeah. So, nice and tidy. It's all, yeah, be good. Loomed up, looks good. So, now, days. Now, Birdo's going to, uh, Birdo's going to get, get it wired in. Yeah. So, quickly, it's going to go down through this grommet to both diffs. Switches go up along here, under the centre console, under the gear surround, into here. And then from there, the power goes down around, one to the fuse box, I think, and one all the way out to the engine bay. And then we will earth it over here. That one's going to the front diff, and this one will work its way down to the rear diff where we had to plug them in. You see that? That's Earth's good, mate. Come that way. Right, that's milliamps to switch the relays on. Yeah. The relays then switch battery power, which is your high amperage circuit. Yeah. I've got Small. it around all the diffs too, so whenever you want you Oh, you know. want me to do DT yeah, connectors? Yeah, you're a busy man, but yeah. I'll just give you the tool. Nah, you do it. Okay. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to have any diffs up, it's not my fault. What's, you installed it, so 100% it's your fault. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, uh, add a fuse in, battery in, turn him on. Click him on. Click him on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll come back in a minute. Yeah, no rush, you do you. Do you. See that? Make the other like electrician do it then. Uh... <laughs> This is the most exciting part of the day. A brand new gear stick around. Don't let kids stand on it. Nah. Don't drop nothing on it. If you break it, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so this one I actually bought from Patrol Apart and it's a genuine gear stick around. I think I got it for, what do you reckon? I, got I think it was like 380. 380, it was on special and normally what, like 520 or something. They are a bit of an expensive. 500-ish, yeah hard to find part. Maybe if you put it in and bust it up the new gear sticks are in. <laughs> I'm seasoned in this thing. <laughs> I ain't busting up shit. This is your expertise, GQs. This is my calling rod, you know. That's the interior. Pretty much back together there. Not the best lighting, so you can't really see it that well. 
but it is about five o'clock now so we're going to finish up there for the day and then we'll come back tomorrow and keep going get all this lighting and all the other bits and pieces done back again the next morning we actually have a little bit of light now in here it's not raining which is good first couple of things are chucking on though washer bottle because Mine hasn't worked for what, like 12 months? Yeah. Every time I need to wash my window, I grab a water bottle and throw it out <laughs> down and use the wiper blades. So I finally got a new washer bottle and I got two of these new corner lights for my grill as well. Because that one's smashed and that one's got mud and water in it. So I did the smart thing and got the exact same ones again. So these ones can fill up with mud and water it's got too. Good, you know, right? <laughs> the same, we might see if we can seal them up a bit better so water and mud don't get in. but. Quickly whip all these things out, get them in. So they're filling up with water because they've got a breather here. So obviously when a light lights up, it gets hot, the air expands. There's nothing on it. Normally they have a little U-turn shape so water doesn't just splash in, but these have nothing. <laughs> water's going straight down. Straight in there, mate. So we'll have to we'll have to modify them. I'm gonna I'll sort something out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, look at that. Nice, yeah. nice white light. That's those new little indicators in, non-broken ones, non-filled with water and mud. We siliconed them up this time, so hopefully the water and mud stays out. And we also got new globes for them, so they actually got white LEDs in there, not yellow, gross looking like they used to be. So they match now. Now the next mod, and I'm pretty excited about this one, Fresh Ultimate 9 40 inch light bar, because I don't really have enough light on my car. Like I've got that little light bar there, but it doesn't really do enough when you're trying to drive at night. Can't do spotlights because the high amount winch is in the way. So I figured I'll get a big light bar up on the roof there. Isn't that lovely? That's beautiful. So I got mounting brackets for it, which are that one. And then I have these couple too, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to mount it flush with my light bar using both the brackets. That's it mounted up there. So that's the bracket it comes with, and then that's the extra bracket we used, and then just used an M8 bolt. So the front runner roof racks, all the channels are M8 bolts. So you can just mount them like that. That's pretty center up there. We'll just line it up a little bit, and then we'll wire it down through to the engine bay. When you're wiring from the roof, you can drill through the roof, but I don't like the idea of that and rust. Oh, we have a rust free roof here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I'll probably just run the wire down neatly in behind the snorkel here, down through the gap and in over to the battery. Are you gonna unbox these ones or you want me to? I can do it. Yeah, alright, let's go. Mate, what's, what's in the box? This Burberry is... box, what's in the brown box, eh? This is the... Uh... <laughs> Ultimate 9 party lights. Magic. The latest and greatest from Ultimate 9. Not only do they do light bars and throttle controllers, now they do party lights. Six pack party lights. Wiring kit, mount kit. Boom. What else do you want? But yeah, I know everyone absolutely loved when I did the party lights on the GU, so hey, let's do some on the GQ. They'll be able to match the LED whip I got here. They do work well as rock lights as well. Like when you're driving at night, they give some good lighting underneath your car. And when you're getting around camp, you turn them on and it just makes getting around your car and in and out of it a heaps easier. So there is a lot of practicalities about them too. Just Plus just who doesn't like party lights under their car. So we've got to work out where we're going to put them. Because you definitely have enough room for this. <laughs> <laughs> I already have so many wires in my car. We're just piling wires on top of wires. It's a pretty simple kit because yeah, like you literally got two wires to the battery and then you yeah. plug your six lights into there once you find a spot for them in the car. Wherever you want your switch. And then just a switch to turn them on. That'll look pretty good in under there. We're just going along working out where to put them all. So yeah, we'll do one on each side in the guard there. Just tech screw in. Just 
<laughs> Keep it basic. So that's what they want, that's what we did. Instructions say if you don't take it, you don't even have progress. <laughs> yeah, that one's a lot, not ripper. Little test run of the app, so we got the app on the phone and but it's got on full party mode. Is it made on service? That's the front couple in, we'll get the next four in. We got special guests entered the workshop. Zip. You ready to work on the car? Nick's got them all mounted up in all their spots, just running all the wires as best possible up to the engine bay now. Obviously this wiring you could conduit it, but we said nah, not today. Not today, we'll just text screw and send it's, it. It's not a vital component. Send them up, yeah. My theory was, it's not. A, well, I was going to say it's not a vital component, but mate, party lights, they're the most vital component of a car. <laughs> but but if, we, if you break one, look, let's be real, it's not going to end the trip. So we are just send them all in. Birdo's bringing all the wiring up in now and then we can neatly plug it in as best as we can. And what'd you say, mate? No, no more wires in this car, thank you. That's enough. That's it, no, it's not possible. That's hectic. I don't condone this. <laughs> I said no more lights. So that is the only issue with like a plug and play system. You end up with a lot of leftover wiring that you can't shorten. So you could, but like the amount of time I'd spend shortening this, changing all the plugs, it, it's just not happening. That's going to be down the engine bay, and no one will know. It's, it's going to be there. tucked away in a fire safe, no possible fire area. They're all working. The party is on. We'll have to take them out for a test on the beach. Finished up all the modifications in the shed there. We figured it wasn't too bad of an afternoon, so we come down and drive to the beach. But yeah, she's all back together. Actually, the only thing we didn't show, John Cooker show around here. Live bars all wired in, so conduit down there. And then from the shop, it's got like a little um, black hidey, tubey thing there to hide the wire off the live bar down into there. All the lockers are wired back together as well. Josh did the plugs at the diffs. So we figured while we're at the beach this afternoon, we'll test out the party lights, the new light bar as the sun goes down here on sunset, and we'll see how these lockers are going. Fingers crossed, they are working now. So I haven't aired down the tires yet. I figured I'll go try and get myself bogged, and then we'll see if the lockers are working once I'm bogged. Both are spinning, but this front's not. So that's just a front locker. Let's see if we get an engagement. Oh, look at that, mate. They're all working. That's back not even in. So I'll disengage them all. That's both lockers in. What's that, both in? Yeah. Front's not doing anything now, but. So that's out, that's in, so it's working there now. Yeah. We did this test multiple times and the back seemed to always engage but the front was very hit and miss whether it would engage or not and in the end it just did not want to engage at all. We were obviously hoping that it was going to be a wiring issue and we really thought it would be based on the tests we'd done and the issues we had found with the wiring. But with this new wiring in that was all tested, tip top, we knew there was no issues with it at all. We were still having the exact same issue with the front locker. So now we still have this front locker 
that only wants to engage here and there. We can only assume it's something internal, which means we're just going to have to pull it out and see if we can figure out what's going on with it. My best guess is from the wiring issues that we have had previously with this front locker, the melting of one of the wires, the bad earth, the bad power, it's caused internal damage to the engagement gear. I've seen it happen on another locker before on Timmy's where the square edges became rounded because it wasn't engaging properly and then it wouldn't work at all. So that's my thinking, but we'll have to figure it out. So it's gotta be internal. Probably, yeah. You're about to be bog bog day. <laughs> Am I? Yeah. Bloody hell, mate. Maybe it's just you, eh? Maybe, maybe it's just you. Maybe it's just my driving. That's annoying, but we were hopeful that that was going to be a locker's working, but I guess we're going to have to pull this front apart. The wiring definitely was bad, so whether or not in the bad wiring it's had for the last six months, it's stuffed up like the engagement gear or something in there because it's never like connecting properly, I don't know. Well, we'll knock some air out of these tyres and go for a bit of a drive around the beach, have some fun and figure out this locker thing later. Better turn on my new party lights on too, see how they're all going. Very, very soft in here, but super fun place to cruise around. <laughs> Not enough power, mate. Nah. <laughs> you could have it. A bit of air out of the tyres might have helped you. Mate, that was, I'd drop you in the first gear, so anyway. <laughs> Now you would have seen Birdo's main car, which is the TD42 Green GQ, and this is his second car, his daily runaround Zook. Uh, this is Roxanne. <laughs> Roxanne. That's her name. In, in, mate, in 30 seconds, we want, we want a rig rundown. All right, 95, wide track Sierra. You know, it's got 29s on it. The little old man owned it, now I owned it. Stock is a rock. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> what engine's it got in it? The, it's got a 1.3, the factory 1.3 with a five-speed. Yeah, okay. And, what, what's your plan with it? Do we expect to see some of the Zook on the channel or? Yeah, yeah, we might, we might see it on there. Oh, I'm probably going to keep it semi-reliable, but uh, I might put like 31s on it. Yeah. And maybe like a two-inch lift, but nothing crazy. It's, it's just, it just does a bit of four-wheel driving here and there, but it's, yeah. it's more the daily run around. Besides the lockers or locker, I think it's just the front still not working. Uh, one positive is this: all this sound deadening, sound deadening made a hell of a difference. It's much nicer in here and much quieter on the road. It really, uh, yeah, worked well. A little bit of fun driving around there, though. Uh, we might sit, enjoy this afternoon sunset, and then we'll go for one more drive along the beach and head back. But that's an episode done. Hopefully, you enjoyed. I tell you what, that was very close. I only just made it off here. The water is coming in fast. And there's coffee rock all up along there. I had to shoot around that last section of the beach there and skip in between waves. How beautiful is this though? Gotta love owning a four-wheel drive and 
getting out here and enjoying this spectacular afternoon at the beach. Right. This aerial, we don't, we're not going to use that aerial anymore, mate. That's party lot switch right there. I didn't even know what that button was. Yeah. I just learned something aerial new. Aerial up, aerial down. Yeah, okay, there you go. Which, it probably doesn't work. Oh, it works. <laughs> oh, look at that. Mate, they said GQs don't have uh, features. <laughs> that's, that's more features than a new Re 79. Rear wiper, here. You got the dash lights there, man. What else do you want, mate? Space age technology back unless in the we, day. Unless we party lights up here. Yeah, we could. Right where it means business. Yeah. See that, mate? Look, look at that. The screen's Whoa. just here, see what's done. Looking good. <laughs> you better not use that, eh? <laughs> I'm gonna have to do a disclosure. Boom boom. You didn't boom boom it. How do you know it's working? Boobity bop. <laughs>